Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Our story is concerned with fear. What is fear? We know its symptoms. The chilled blood, shortened breath. But what is the emotion itself? And where does it come from? Well, it is the anticipation of something that has not yet happened. It is the alarm our bodies set up to tell us we're about to be injured. All we really know is that the thing to be feared is not now. It's around the corner. Fear is the voice that says, watch out. Our mystery drama, Fear, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Jack Grimes. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and your Singer Sewing Center. I'll be back shortly with Act One. No one lives, has lived, or will ever live without fear. The rich, the powerful, the elite, you think they don't feel fear? I think they feel it constantly because they are constantly on guard lest they be toppled from their positions. Well, the hero of this story occupies no such position. He is an obscure bank teller, close to middle age, and his name is Edgar Ellerby. But he, too, like the rest of us, is haunted by fear. I've been afraid all my life. Of what? Of everything. And I mean everything. When I was little and in school, I was afraid the teacher would call on me and I wouldn't know the answer. If I knew it one time, I was sure I wouldn't know it the next. If I asked a girl for a date and she turned me down, I was scared to death there was something repulsive about me that I didn't know about and couldn't correct. If she accepted, I was sure there was something awful about her. Even now, I can't mail a letter without worrying that I've forgotten to put a stamp on it or gotten the zip code wrong. You'll wonder why I became a bank teller. Well, there was something about having to account for money at the end of every single day. You can't go home unless you balanced everything out. I thought that would be a calming influence. Going home every day knowing that it had all come out even and I was in the clear. And then one day it happened. I, I think I'm short. I think I'm short. We all know you're short, Eddie. You just finding it out? I, 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 I mean short my cash. How much, Eddie? Ninety dollars. Oh, you're going to catch it. God, don't be like that, Hilda. It can happen to anybody. It's never happened to me. You want me to count it up for you, Eddie? Oh, Mary Lou, would you? I've been over it so many times. Watch it. Here comes old Tupper. Uh-oh. Wait until he goes into his office. Right, right. Wouldn't do to have the manager find out you can't add. I'm tired, that's all. Just shut up, Hilda. Good afternoon, Mr. Tupper. Miss Grant? Uh, Mr. Tupper? Uh, step into my office, will you, Ellaby? Uh, now, Mr. Tupper? Right, now. Afternoon, Mr. Tupper. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Schwartz. What do you suppose he wants? He couldn't have found out I'm short in my cash. Of course not. I just found out myself. Bad news travels fast. Oh, Hilda, don't be so dumb. This is the first time he's asked to see me about anything. Eddie, maybe it's about a promotion. Did you ever think of that? Uh, You think it could be? Well, you've been going to school. Oh, sure. He's going to make you a vice president with a great big desk up front. My grades aren't even in yet. Well... Don't worry till you know. And don't keep him waiting. That's one thing bank managers don't care for, being kept waiting. You run along, Eddie. And then come back and tell us. And good luck. Come in. Ah, yes, come in, Ellaby. Up, oh, thank you, sir. Take a chair, Ellaby. Uh-huh. Uh, this is Detective Bradshaw. Bradshaw, this is uh, Ed Gallaby. Hello, Ellaby. Uh, Detective, uh, uh... Bradshaw. Uh, Bradshaw, uh, very nice to meet you. Yes, yeah, sit down, Ellaby. Um, uh, yes, sir, thank you, sir. Well, I, uh, I suppose you're wondering why Detective Bradshaw's here, hmm? Uh, well, I'm 
wondering why I'm here. <laughs> well, I'll come straight to the point. One of our branches was held up this noon. It was? Held up? The one over by the river? That's terrible. The fella got away with $8,000. Gee, that makes me feel terrible. It happened about 12.15. 1215. Gee, oh, that's terrible. Guy walks up to one of the tellers, says, uh, hand it over. Teller hands it over. Guy walks out, over, done with. Like that. That's awful. Uh, where were you at that time, Ellerby? Oh, me? Why, I was here. Oh, no, no, wait. You, you said 1215? That's right. Oh, I, I was on my lunch hour. That, that, that's my lunch hour, 12 to 1. Do you mind telling us where you ate lunch? Which restaurant? Well, I don't eat in restaurants. I eat... Well, I mean, I, I, I bring my own lunch. In a lunchbox, you know, mm-hmm. sandwich, uh, piece of fruit. and. You know. Where do you eat it? Well, sometimes in the park. But sometimes I eat it here. Where did you eat it today? Well, t- uh, today it was so hot. Uh, well, today I didn't eat in the park. I ate down by the river. Uh-huh. But, but nowhere near the bank. No, nowhere near. But blocks from where that branch is. Blocks from there. Mm-hmm. Anybody see him? Well, somebody must have. Who? Well, somebody. I, I went right down to the river bank. I, I wanted to catch a breeze off the river if I could. I, I remember I thought of going out on one of the piers, but they were unloading a boat, so I didn't. I, I just sat down on the bank. So the guys unloading the boat didn't see you? Well, they might have noticed me. That, that, that they might have. Of course, they were pretty busy, but they... Uh, look, you, you, you don't think... You, you you couldn't possibly think, or you... Well, you couldn't think that I... No, you, you couldn't think that. We are not thinking anything right at the moment. Yeah, but you must have a reason. I mean, why ask me where I was? I mean, why me especially? Well, we have a reason for that. You see, we have it on film. What on film? The holder. The monitors are running all the time, L.B. Now, you know that. Yeah, I, I know that. Well, Mr. it's Tuffer. all there. The hold-up man shows up very clear. Oh, you, you think I might know him? Why don't we roll the film, Mr. Tupper? I can set up right here, if that's all right. Sure, sure. And uh, while you're doing that, I'm uh, I'm going to get a couple of other people in here who uh, might help with the identification. Go right ahead. Uh, back in a second. Who, uh... Uh, who did he uh, go to get? I don't know exactly. Uh, do you need any uh, help with that uh, equipment? No, thanks. I'm pretty used to it. Oh. You, um, you specialize in uh, bank holdups? They're part of my job. Not all of it, just part. I, I see, I see. Well, interesting work, I imagine. Mm. Uh, how long have you worked for the bank, Ellerby? Oh, a long, long time. In the 12 years. Here? This branch? No, no. I, I started downtown uh, five and a half years there. Uh, then I came uptown. This branch? No, no. The uh, uh, river branch. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, b- but I left there two years ago and, and, and came over here. Well, still, you must know it pretty well, the uh, river branch. I haven't been inside it since they moved me over here. Uh-huh. Yeah, Mr. Tupper said he was going to get some people who might help to identify the thief. Now, why would anybody in this branch be able to identify a thief in the river branch? I might as well tell you, Ellerby. On the film, the hold-up man looks like you. You're kidding. I never kid. Ed, go right in, girls. Okay. Hmm. Now, everybody, uh, take chairs. Hmm. Eddie? What's this about? Mary Lou, I... This is Detective Bradshaw, girls. Miss Grant, Miss Schwartz. From the police? Well, I'll uh, I'll stand up in the back here. Uh, Detective Bradshaw is going to show us a piece of film taken from one of the monitors at our river branch. Now, there was a hold-up there today, 12.15, and it's all on film. Now, it only runs about a minute. You'll see the whole thing. The hold-up man shows up very clearly, so pay close attention and see if you recognize him. Uh... Detective Bradshaw can stop the film at any point. If you want it to run over again, you just say so. Now, you understand? Yes, Mr. Tucker. Yes, sir. Well, I guess we're ready, Detective. Pay attention now. Oh, 
my. Look at that. Oh, stop. Stop the picture. You recognize somebody? Can you go back? Sure. Uh, Here we go again. Sure, Miss Schwartz. I'd go in anywhere. Mary Lou. Uh, I'd like to see it again. Okay. It's plain as anything. It's Eddie. I want to see it again. Here we go. Plain as day. Shut up, Hilda. Uh, now, would you stop it, please? That's not Eddie. How can you say that? Eddie's not that tall. Uh, how's that? Uh, you can see that man's shoulders over the top of the counter. Mm-hmm. Well, if it was Eddie, you wouldn't be able to. You'd just see his head and his neck. Well, how do you know all this, Miss Grant? Well, Mr. Ellerby is five feet one and a half inches tall. And the counter is four feet four inches high, so... Standing at the counter, you'd see only as far as his shoulders. You wouldn't see his shoulders at all. Uh, what's your height, Ellerby? Five feet one and a half. You won't mind if I check that later? No, not at all. Hmm. Now, of course, I'll check the counter, too. Yeah, of, of course. All right, folks, all right, that's all. Um, I'd like to say something else, Mr. Tupper. That is all, Miss Grant. Anybody who thinks that Mr. Ellerby would rob a bank is crazy. Miss Grant. We are just investigating possibilities. Well, Mr. Ellaby is not a possibility. It's not possible for Edgar Ellaby to be a thief or a liar or anything like that. Mr. Ellaby is honest and sincere and kind and good. And wonderful man. All right a wonderful now. man. Wonderful. I just sat there. I couldn't believe what had happened. And I couldn't believe what was happening. I couldn't believe that a man who looked like me had robbed a bank and taken $8,000. I couldn't believe that a camera had taken a picture of the whole thing. And I couldn't believe that Mary Lou Grant thought I was a wonderful man. the most fearful sensation is that of being trapped. In fact, I think it should be put at the head of the list. Illness is frightening. Natural disasters are frightening. The unknown can be frightening. But to be caught in a snare, to be ambushed, that may well be the most frightening thing of all. I'll be back in a few moments with Act Two. Edgar Ellerby has come under suspicion of robbing the bank for which he works, though at a different branch. The bank manager, a police detective, and two of Edgar's fellow tellers watched while a film of the holdup was run off. There was no doubt that the thief uncannily resembled Edgar. So said Hilda Schwartz. But Mary Lou Grant quickly and dramatically, indeed passionately, pointed out that the film showed a man visibly taller than Edgar. Mr. Ellerby is five feet, one and a half inches tall. The counter is four feet, four inches tall. So standing at the counter, you'd see only as far as his shoulders. You wouldn't see his shoulders at all. You'd only see his head and his neck. What's your height, Ellerby? Five, one and a half. You won't mind if I check on that? Not at all. Anybody who thinks Eddie Ellerby would rob a bank is crazy. Mr. Ellerby is honest and sincere and kind and good and, and a wonderful man. And that will be all, Miss Grant. A wonderful man, wonderful. Mary Lou had tears in her eyes when she and Hilda and I left Mr. Tupper's office. It was the first time in my life that I'd been in trouble of any kind. 
And it was the first time in my life anyone had shed tears because of me. Don't worry, Eddie. It'll all come out all right. I hope so. Believe me. <laughs> I'll try. You got to admit, the man on the film looks like you. I know. He looks exactly like you. I know. Same nose, same eyes, same upper lip. Hilda, you know Eddie didn't do it. Then it was his doppelganger. His what? His doppelganger. His double. I've got a double? Everybody has. Didn't you know that? Sometimes it's a ghost. Well, a ghost wouldn't hold up a bank. How do you know what a ghost would do? Well, I guess I don't. Sometimes the ghost doesn't just look like the human double. He sounds like him, too. Well, the film doesn't record the sound, just the picture. But the teller at the river branch might remember the voice. And it might turn out to be your voice, Eddie. Oh, shut up, Hilda. Sometimes people see their own doppelgangers. <laughs> Scary, huh? Very scary. But you can't get away from the fact that the hold-up man was taller than Eddie. Two or three inches taller. Sometimes doppelgangers float above the ground. Didn't you know? Why is that? Because they're ghosts, little man. Well, I'm going home. It's been quite a day. So long, everybody. Goodbye, Hilda. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Probably. What does she mean, probably? Oh, Eddie. Does she think I'll be arrested? Does she think I'll be in jail? Of course not. Then what? What does she think? Never mind what Hilda thinks. Listen, Eddie. Hmm? I found the $90. What? What $90? The $90. You were short. It was a mistake in a deposit slip. Oh, I should have caught it. Never mind. I caught it. Oh, Mary Lou, what... Eddie. Hmm? I don't think that you should be alone tonight. Why don't we have dinner together? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Uh, I guess it would at that. Do you want to come to my place? Well, I prepared a meatloaf this morning. It's it's in the fridge. Do you like meatloaf? I love meatloaf. Well, I, I make it with oatmeal. Oh, that's interesting. I soak the oatmeal in milk first. Let's go to your place and have meatloaf. And I have broccoli. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Come on, let's go. Funny. This was the first date I'd ever had with a girl that I looked forward to. Not that I'd had so many dates, but the ones I did have never turned out too well. Now, here I was in my own apartment with a girl I'd worked next to for two years and never asked to go out with me. Here I was in the only real trouble I'd ever been in, and I was having a wonderful time. Well, the meatloaf will take an hour, so I uh, opened a bottle of wine. Wonderful. I uh, don't know if you'll like the broccoli. Well, of course I will. Well, I parboil it, and then I saute it in butter and garlic. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's different. Uh, here's your wine. Thank you. I was just looking at your books. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, I read a lot. You read a lot of books like... Uh... How to love yourself. Books like that. And <laughs> be a happy neurotic. Yeah, well, I, I've i always had trouble in that department. The loving yourself department? Well, it's hard for me even to put up with myself. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, cheerio. Cheerio. Ah, you, you see, see now, like that. Why, why did I say cheerio? <laughs> why not? Because cheerio is for English people to say, not people like me. I, I'm, I'm always trying to impress people, and I don't know how, and I hate myself for trying and not succeeding. Edgar, do you mind very much being short? Oh, well, I'm not crazy about it. Well, I'm not crazy about having such icky hair. Your hair isn't so wicky. And you're not so short. How tall are you? I'm five six, without heels. That's four inches taller than me. Well, I never figured it out. Well, that's what it is. I guess it's been very hard on you not being taller. It's been a trauma. You know what a trauma is? Yes, something that hurts. A trauma is a shock, a, a disturbing experience. There was a psychoanalyst. His name was Otto Rank. 
He said that all the trauma you go through later in life are reproductions of being born. Do you believe that? Gee, I don't know, Eddie. Do you? Yeah, sometimes I think I do. Sometimes I think the worst thing that can happen to you is to be born. Here you are inside your mother where it's all warm and safe. And all of a sudden she decides she's had enough of you. She starts to get rid of you. Yeah. No matter what you do. And of course there's nothing you can do because you don't even know what's happening. You're pushed out. Out into the cold, into the light, and all the the noise and clamor and chaos of living. Yeah. And you never get over it. Never. I think I'd like a little more wine. Oh, uh, sure. Excuse me. There must be some way to get over it. Well, I don't know what it is. Though right now, right this very minute, I uh, feel like I'm starting to get over it. I think I'm getting over it, too. She liked the meatloaf. And she liked the broccoli. And we had melon for dessert, and she liked that. After dinner, we each had a brandy with our coffee. I was feeling just wonderful. I I, I couldn't stop talking. I I tried, but I couldn't stop. It's like a disease with me, trying to, to, to be something... Because I feel like I'm I'm nothing. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror just to be sure I'm there. That I haven't evaporated or dissolved or, or disappeared. Oh, Eddie. Uh, I, I, I want to show you something. You stay right there and I'll get it. I've, I've never shown this to anybody in my whole life. I I never thought I would show it to anybody because it, it's so silly. But I don't know. Tonight I, I feel like it. Well, what is it? Well, you, you just wait to see. You just, you just wait. It's so silly. It's... What do you think of it? What is it? It's a top hat. What? A top hat. A high silk hat. It it was my grandfather's. Oh, yeah. I've seen them in the movies. Fred Astaire movies. He made one called Top Hat. He wore a white tie and tails. I used to admire him more than anybody. I still do. I've seen him on TV. Well, all I have is the top hat. I never had tails or a white tie. And, of course, I... Can't dance. And of course, you're not Fred Astaire. No. No, I'm not. Will you walk me home, Eddie? It's not far. You have to go home? Yes. Well, sure. I'll walk you home. You uh, say you're five foot six? Mm, without heels. You're not scrunching down. Not what? Well, you're not trying to be shorter. Well, why should I? Eddie. Hmm? Let's have lunch together tomorrow. You want to? I'd love to. Well, you, uh, we could go to a restaurant. Or I could bring a box lunch to work. Enough for both of us. Would you really like to do oh, that? Oh, I'd love it. Well, we could go to the park and eat it. Yeah, we could do that. We could go to the park or... Or we could go down by the river. I left her at the door of the place where she lived. I was like in a daze. All I could think of was having lunch with her the next day. In the park or or down by the river. I I almost ran home and up the stairs. Uh, My door was open. I knew I'd locked it, but it was open. Hello there. Uh, hello. Detective Bradshaw. Remember me? Uh, yeah, from this afternoon, Mr. Tucker's office. That's right. Uh, you uh, wanted to talk to me? You uh, had somebody here for dinner. Uh, Mary Lou Grant from the bank. You met her. Mm-hmm. The one that stood up for you? The one that said you couldn't be the hold-up man because you're too short? Five foot... One, she said. That's right. Uh, five, one and a half. Mm-hmm. She said the counter at the bank is four foot four inches. And if the hold-up man was you, your shoulders wouldn't show up on the film. Only your head and neck. Now, isn't that what she said? Yes. To your girl, this Mary Lou? Yes. 
Uh, no, uh, she's a friend. Mm. She know you wear lifts. What? Does she know you wear lifts in your shoes? Three-inch lifts. I don't. No? Now, what are these? I found them in the bureau. They're... They're lifts. Yeah. Yes, they are. Three-inch lifts. With these in your shoes, you'd be five foot four and a half inches, wouldn't you? Huh? And your shoulders would show above the counter. That's how I figure it, Ellaby. How do you figure it? Just when the blood has cooled, just when the knots in the stomach have come untied, just when the breathing has slowed down, just as the world has begun to look friendly and life-inviting, just at that very moment, fate can strike a man down with a heavy mallet of fear. I'll be back shortly with the final act of our story. Edgar Ellerby, who stands five feet one and a half inches, seemed to be cleared of a bank holdup when it was pointed out that a man of that stature could barely see across the teller's counter. After an intimate dinner with his friend and defender, as well as fellow teller Mary Lou Grant, Edgar returned home to be confronted by Detective Bradshaw, who had discovered a pair of three-inch lifts clearly meant to be inserted in Edgar Ellerby's shoes in order to increase his height. Now it is the following day. Noontime, in fact. It's nice here by the river. I brought fried chicken and three bean salad. You like three bean salad? Well, I never had any. Oh, it's very good. Mary Lou, everything's changed since last night. Uh, after I walked you home, uh, after one of the nicest evenings I ever spent. It was nice. I thought. Telling you about me wanting to be like Fred Astaire, showing you my top hat, I... I, I never wore it, you know. I just kept it. Kind of a... A symbol of an old dream. Yeah, but what good are old dreams? What good are symbols? Especially symbols of old dreams. Like the lift. Lift? What a lift. Things men put in their shoes to, um... Make them taller. Look taller. When I first met you and I realized that you were... Five feet five at least, and I dreamed of taking you out, even dancing with you. I thought if I had three inch lifts in my shoes, you wouldn't mind dancing with me. I never wore them. I tried them out around the room, but I kept falling down. I couldn't even walk. <laughs> How could I possibly dance? So I just put them away. Well, I think you should throw them out and take me dancing tonight. I could be in jail tonight. Mary Lou, when I got home last night, Detective Bradshaw was there. He had found the lifts. So now he thinks the hold-up man could have been me. You have to admit, the man on the film looked exactly like me. No, he didn't have your expression. Well, I imagine your expression changes when you're holding up a bank. <laughs> well, you had enough to eat. I wasn't very hungry. All right, well, why don't you pick up the trash and throw it in that trash basket, and I think I'll just walk out on the pier and take one last look at the river. I started putting the chicken away in the three bean salad. I felt so bad. I looked at Mary Lou standing at the end of the pier. She was so slim, so graceful, so pretty. And so tall. Still, she'd asked me to take her dancing. Was it possible she didn't mind being four inches taller than me? That I didn't have to mind being four inches shorter? And I picked up the trash and threw it in the basket, and Mary Lou and I went back to the bank. The late lunch people are thinning out. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, there you are, madame. Thank you. Uh, next? Uh, yes? Oh. Everything you've got. Hand it over. What? All of it. This ain't a cap pistol. Well, what are you... You all right, Eddie? It's, it's happened. You look funny. Quit stalling, Ellaby. Eddie? I don't know what came over me. It didn't feel like me at all. I didn't think what I should do or what, what I should... What would happen if I did it? I, I just stared into the face of what was exactly like mine and heard the voice like mine. I I didn't think about doing anything, about giving up the money or not giving up the money. I, I didn't think at all. Eddie! You are... What I did, I jumped across the counter. Now, I don't know how I did it, but I leaped across that counter. Maybe I flew across it. I don't know, but my hands went right for that throat. Oh, Eddie! We struggled on the floor for a few seconds. Then he got away from me and ran out of the bank. What's I ran after him. He ran fast. I ran faster. I never knew I could run so fast. We were right into the street. What's up? Hey, what's up? The thief. You said thief? Hold up the bank. Where? Well, where's the police? Oh, they're headed for the river. Yes, we were headed for the river. I was gaining on him. I thought to myself, maybe he's got lips in his shoes. That's why he can't run so fast. More people on the street stopped. Their mouths dropped open. A few of them ran along with me. Do that, lady. Adrenaline must have been pouring into my veins a barrel a minute. My legs moved like pistons. My short little legs I'd always thought were so useless. I kept my eyes on the man I was chasing. My double. My doppelganger. Or was he a ghost? Whatever, whichever, whatever. He was responsible for the sudden change in my life. And it flashed like lightning across my mind, the sudden change in me. We ran and we ran and we came to the river. He ran on onto a pier and I ran after him. He reached the end of the pier. He stopped for a second. I was almost on top of him. Then I heard a splash, and he disappeared. I dove after him. Under the water, I opened my eyes. I was desperate to get a look at this imposter, but he was starting to seem to me. I was so I to see him. I forgot I couldn't swim, but then a very strong arms were on my neck, and then we through the water. I heard a familiar voice. <laughs> Yeah, like, don't fight me. Don't fight me. That's it, that's it, wife. Just let your head fall back. Okay, okay. All right, I've got you. It was Detective Bradshaw. He told me to shore him up on the back. I I was so surprised to see him and so happy. I tried to thank him, but he he wouldn't listen. I'll I'll be around later, Ellaby. Now, the police car is going to drive you home. You just take a hot bath. Crawl into bed. Try to relax, little fella. You're done good. I didn't mind that little fellow bit. I liked him saying, You're done good. Six foot six or five foot one. What's the difference when somebody says, You done good? I went home and took a hot bath and laid down on the bed and thought, what a nice feeling, not to be afraid anymore. Not really because I'd run after the bank robber, but more because I'd found out that I'd had it in me to do something like that. I thought about it till I fell asleep. A couple of hours later, the phone rang. Hello? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fine, Mr. Tupper. I, uh, wonder if you'd mind coming down to the bank. What? Oh, did, 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 did they find a robber? No, 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 not yet. They, they're dragging the river. Oh, maybe he uh, swam to the other side. Well, nobody saw him do it. Oh, well, maybe he swam down the river. Well, the current's pretty strong there. I, I don't think he'd make it. Oh, maybe he got washed out to sea. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we'll see you at the bank, Ellerby, about half an hour. I'll be there, Mr. Tupper. When I got to the bank, Mr. Tupper met me and showed me into his office. It was just like before. Hilda was there, and Mary Lou, and Detective Bradshaw. And the projector was set up in the screen, and Detective Bradshaw was talking. Now, watch this carefully, please. I have a chair, Ellerby. You all right? Yeah, I'm I'm fine, thanks. Very good. Now, I'm going to run the film from the monitor as of 1.56 this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Tupper, if you'll turn off the lights... Now. 
Uh, that's Mr. Potter. He uh, he made a deposit. That's Mrs. Connor. She cashed a check, fifty dollars. Oh, here's where the Mac. Right here. Wait. Stop. Where is he? Want me to go back? P- p- please, please. Here we go. Mr. Potter. Mrs. Connors. Then nobody. I see somebody. There you go, Ellerby. Across the counter. But there was somebody. Want me to run it again? Look, there was somebody. Why would I jump over the counter if there wasn't anybody there? Uh, you didn't see anybody on the film, did you? No, but I... I did. I saw somebody. Now, now, Hilda. I did. Nobody else did. Not everybody has the power to see ghosts. Uh, just what did you see on the film, Hilda? I saw Mr. Ellerby. Only a little taller, I saw Mr. Ellerby's double. Uh, we don't believe in ghosts at this bank, and I don't imagine the police believe in them either. Then who, what did I chase down the street? What or who dove into the river? Well, we haven't found a body. I have my doubts we ever will. It's funny, though. We did find something. A, a, a clue? You found a clue? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. We found a high silk hat. Uh, what they used to call a uh, top hat. You remember them? Hmm? Now, why would anybody throw a top hat in the river? Why would anybody even own a top hat? Mary Lou and I left together. We wandered down to the river where we'd had lunch just a few hours before. There was the pier where I'd run after what I thought was a bank robber. Where I'd seen him jump in, I'd heard the splash. Where I'd jumped in after him. How do you feel, Eddie? Oh, all right, I guess. Let's sit down, shall we? Yeah. Imagine this is where it all happened, or didn't happen. Oh, it happened, all right. What happened? Did I have a hallucination? I would, what was it? Well, maybe. Did I make up the whole thing? Well, was I just showing off or what? Does that matter? It does to me. Why can't you look at it this way? You thought you saw a bank robber that looked like you, except that he was three inches taller. Or if Hilda is right, you did see him. You saw your double, your um, uh, doppelganger. But whichever it was, you didn't fold up or fall over in a faint or even yell for help. You jumped across the counter and you tackled him. And then you chased him out of the bank and down the street. You jumped in the river after him when you can't even swim. Yeah, I did that. Well, do you think that a man who goes out in the dark after a burglar without a gun and all alone is any less brave because there was no robber there in the first place? He thought there was. And he went anyway. Well, I think that's very brave. You do? I most certainly do. Uh, we've never been what you'd call really close, Mary Lou. <laughs> I've always felt close to you, Eddie. You just haven't felt close to me. I wanted to. You wanted to be Fred Astaire, and I wasn't Ginger Rogers. (laughs) You're prettier than Ginger Rogers. Well, I'm one thing Ginger Rogers isn't. I'm here. Yeah. You still want to be Fred Astaire, and... Wear a top hat? I think I'll throw it away. My top hat. (laughs) I already did. You did? What? That's your top hat they found floating in the river. I stole it last night when we had our dinner. I threw it in the river this noon when you were packing up the lunch. Mary Lou, why did you do that? I thought you didn't really need it anymore. I thought it was high time you stopped wanting to be Fred Astaire because I knew that I could never be Ginger Rogers. And now we're just you and me. Ah, oh, it's better this way. Yes. I think it's perfect. 
<laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Why? What are you doing tonight? Nothing. Why? Well, let's you and me go dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Fear means paralysis. Fear means the inability to act. Fear means being stopped in your tracks. Fear means being helpless as an infant. Fear is the enemy of life. Yet, as we have seen in the case of Edgar Ellaby, the paralysis can be broken. The ability to act can be restored. We can overcome helplessness and move in our tracks. So the real enemy is not fear itself. Only the fear of fear. I'll be back shortly. There's plenty in the world today to fill us with fear. We'd be fools not to feel fear. Yet, we must move, must act, must overcome paralysis, and stop acting like children. So, with fear in our hearts, let us be courageous. Haunted by dread, let us dare to look around the corner, see what's there, and whatever it is, deal with it the best we can. For all we know, it may be a ghost. A ghost as frightened as we are. Our cast included Jack Grimes, Marion Selders, Jane White, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.